we had a level on gold that we would like to see closed above. And it was a certain, it was you, we were using quarterly momentum. By that, I mean a three quarter moving average, which is almost the same as a 200 day. And it had a structure at a couple percent above uh, on momentum where you could see a flat ceiling. Couldn't see it on the gold price chart. Some analysts are saying that there could be a sell everything moment when the stock market collapses and people are just trying to liquidate everything, at least for the short term. Do you not see that happening? It seems like you're quite bullish on commodities, especially gold and silver. No, we already have an example. We just dropped 10% in the S&P pretty sharply too, right? We went from 4,800 to uh, 4,222 in a matter of about four weeks. Bloomberg Commodity Index went up. Gold was relatively stable. Silver's dropped maybe a little bit. Most commodities have not dropped. Oil's gained further ground. So what we saw in March of 2020, which is burned in everybody's memory, was a coincident drop in gold miners in the last days of the stock market drop in, in March of 2000. Actually, stock market started down in February 2020. Uh, we put out a major sell. And it was late March, it really caught steam on the downside, crash dimensions, 35% in a couple of weeks. The tail end of that, the gold miners jumped in for about four, five, six days. That's all. And then once the stock market hit its low, the gold miners zoomed out of the hole and made, you know, went from, I think GDX went from the teens, like 16 bucks up to 46 by the summer, you know, uh, a lot better than the stock market. Uh, now it's pulled back. But the correlation of that, that event, that emotional event, I don't think you're going to get it because I don't think we're going to crash again. I think this is going to be like a typical bull market top where you get double digit percent drops, but not of the 35 percent quality in weeks. But instead, you get 10 percent over a month and you get a rally and then you get another 10 percent. But there's no emotion in it. There's no panic. Uh, and that's the way most bull markets peak in the stock market. Uh, without panic. And I think, therefore, people who are afraid of that single event that's burned in their memory of March 2020 need to sort of put that aside. I don't think we're going to see that kind of event again. Um, that's that's our thought on it. So it's because of the gradual nature of this crash that the commodities and gold and silver probably won't crash along with the stock market? Yeah, no. In other words, you get a bear market in the stock market that starts and maybe lasts a couple of years and has huge percentage dimension on the downside, but it doesn't occur in three weeks. You know, we don't have a 35% drop in three weeks, which we did in 87, which we did in early 29, and we did in March last year. And you'll notice that 87, it didn't begin a bear market. In fact, when the crash was over, market turned up again. And in March of 2020, you had a crash event. It didn't lead to a bear market. Market turned up again. The only time in over 100 years is, is the Dow in 29 that did crash at the beginning, rallied back 50%, and then went into an arduous bear market. So crashes are not the way bear markets begin. And so I don't think we're going to have another March 2020 in this time. We're going to have arm wrestling uh, with slabs of decline, but you know, not of the, of the emotional variety we had in March of 2020. So I don't think you're going to see that kind of situation where there's, there's a panic to run out of everything. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we had a very sharp drop in, in uh, January for the S&P and the NASDAQ of, you know, 10, 12 percent variety, but no consequence in these other markets that you can you can overlay and show that, oh, it went with it, you know. So I, I think that's the first hint that of what we're talking about is arduous bear market in stocks, asset flow into undervalued assets, uh, equity flow into those commodities and commodity related stocks. We have some viewers questions here and Bob is wanting to know what are the current momentum trigger levels on gold and silver? Back in November, we had a level on gold that we would like to see closed above. And it was a certain, it was you, we were using quarterly momentum. By that, I mean a three quarter moving average, which is almost the same as a 200 day. And it had a structure at a couple percent above uh, on momentum where you could see a flat ceiling. Couldn't see it on the gold price chart. It was descending highs on the gold price chart. But on momentum, it was a flat ceiling, a couple percent above that average. It wasn't at the average itself. When gold popped through there in November, it shot from the eight, low 1800s to the high 1800s. So gold achieved something then that said, I'm awake, I'm awake, 
you know, that March low of 2021, go buy it, it was 16.70. Okay, well, I got up to 18.90 in that rally in November last year. The problem was we demanded that silver agree with it, and it didn't. Silver came up. We had a number in the final quarter of last year that we could close a week out on silver above that certain number. It was in the $25 range, okay? Then we said, okay, silver's joining with gold. It's saying, I'm, I'm here too. I'm, I'm, I'm awake. It stopped a penny and a half short of our number on the highest weekly close and it went down. So it acknowledged our momentum level as being pivotal, but instead of closing above it, it, it rolled over from it. And when it rolled over from it, it therefore defined that level a second time as important. And then last month in January, the number had adjusted down for silver to the mid 24s. OK, and our high weekly close was about a dime below our breakout number for January. So it did the same thing in January, it refused to break out over our quarterly momentum breakout structure. That structure is now so clear that if you could see that oscillator, you would say, oh, boy, this is you break through this, you're going. OK, but silver, is, it, it's sort of like what we're seeing in the stock market right now, where we got a negative signal out of NASDAQ 100 and Amazon, but we didn't get the comparable negative signal out of the S&P yet. I think it's inevitable it'll probably happen this month, but uh, let's forget that. The same thing's been going on with gold and silver. While they've been in a protracted year and a half pullback, gold made its low actually in March of 2021, a 20% decline, it took it nine months to lose 20%. Compare that to the stock market, so to lose 10% in four weeks. Okay, but anyway, then gold went into a range well above that low. So it sort of stopped its decline, but it's not broken out yet. It's not renewed itself. It said, okay, I'm coming out of this congestion. It did in November, but silver didn't agree with it. And that was very important to us. But in the process of its action, silver set up in November and again in the January rally, that structure is so clear and it's in the mid 24s it's applicable for this quarter if you close a week out above our number it says silver's ready to go and the structure is so clear on momentum that when you break through it we think there will be a rush in silver to get back to the highs we've seen over the last year and a half meaning you'll go from like the 24 25 zone up to 30 very quickly i don't know how much resistance will be up there i don't think much the upper end of that range, because frankly, most people don't think you're going back up there. So I think most sellers are already sold, if you know what I mean. And if you cross our breakout number for silver, we think it's going to quickly rush back up to the top end of the action of the last year and a half and, and go through that. So our pivotal level is not far above the market, you know, a buck and a half or so above the market uh, for silver. And I frankly think you'll see our breakout this quarter. Uh, we measure it week by week. We want a weekly close above that number. There's some other lesser indicators on silver that say, see, right now we've traded over 23 this week and gotten a low under 22. It's a level where silver keeps holding around 22 bucks for the last year. Multiple lows there. Pretty soon they're going to need to break it through there and keep it below there if you're a bear. So far, they can't even seem to break it much below there. But if you get back up to mid 23s, we've got some other indicators that say, OK, it's probably going to try to engage that quarterly breakout in the mid 24s. So right now I'd be watching, you know, a like 2350 area. If you get silver back up there, it's about 40 cents above this week's high. Um, it's probably coming up out of here. Um, anyway, that's the situation is that we've had this correction in the precious metal, the monetary metals. Gold has indicated, OK, I've had it. You know, I'm not going to crash through the low again. OK, that was probably the low in March of 2021. OK, 1670. But silver hasn't quite greed yet. So that's what we're watching for. And we think once silver crosses its line, you could probably just throw a dart at the gold and silver mining sector. And that, that that sector will come to life again. And we all know how it behaves. You know, when the, when the gold and silver market are sloppy, they're real weak. When the gold and silver market are in unison on the upside, they get real strong. So it's like an elastic band, a <laughs> uh, very emotional sector. Uh, but it, it's it's actually started to stabilize recently. The the, uh, the gold mining and silver mining, they started to, they pop through some lows recently and it, eh, eh, they pop back up again. So uh, anyway, so that's an area we're watching. 
hasn't spoken yet, but we're, we're keen on, on silver. We think it's, it's the one to watch now. So you're saying